I'm going to go over the, the uh, scrolliding with some ideas I have. doesn't mean you have to copy these ideas, but when I experiment around with it, I do notice, like I said uh, when we met, that uh, you have to be careful when you have repeated bass notes, that they don't all sound very vertical and not lifting up some of them. Um, and it does feel uh, organically that you should lift up the second and fourth beats a bit. Um, let's see what happens when you do that. I'm looking at the left hand. So you get this. Resolve it though. And the sixth chord with a suspension on it. See, C sharp minor with that seventh on it, because the B. And then it falls into an A major chord, which is the four chord of E major. We're going to E major, and here comes the dominant. to it, but um, you've got to know that you can't have repeated um, bass notes that repeat and, and play them equally. You have to lift some of them up. Okay, so we've ended up in E major, and I say the most poignant place is the deceptive cadence that is so beautiful. He does this. to the dominant of E major because we're starting with the dominant B. Let's see what happens quickly. It's not gonna. It's gonna have a lot of key changes in the second section, and usually in the B section of Baroque music, if you're gonna have a development, like we would call it here, harmonic development, where you use different harmonies, different keys, it will occur in the B section. That's exactly what's happening here, where it's starting to move more into different keys, and not static. It just keeps going. So let's see what happens. So we think we're in B major, but we're not. Not yet. B minor. B minor. So it's a B minor chord. But upstairs, we're in F-sharp minor by the notes. We're using the harmonic form because we have the E-sharp. Now suddenly, we have a diminished chord. It's a diminished chord, which the left-hand bass is going down through that diminished chord. 
But finally, here's the arrival of it, the A7, which is taking us now to D minor. So we're going to another key. D minor, A, still G. Now another diminished chord. It keeps going to diminished chords. Just know you're going to a diminished chord, which is actually the diminished chord of A minor. But now, not going to be A minor, who's going to a dominant 7, A7 chord, which brings us back to D minor. D minor. Lots of D minor. Let's see what happens. Where is meandering now? Let's see what happens here. To A minor for a moment. A minor. And then dominant of A minor. But A major, because he's inserting a C sharp. We discovered that last time. Jump tonics, A major. Lots of chromatics. This is all going little E major. This is all A major. A major. All A major. This is a sixth chord of A major, so the deceptive case instead of A major, it's the F sharp minor chord. Yada. You have to dip it. Now he's making sequences up. That's the dominant of A major. And then passing through the tonic. Oh, that's what it is. I changed it. And then we have four chord. One, six, four. So all this meandering around upstairs, there are sequences and some are half steps. He's meandering around through A major, actually, and doing a deceptive cadence, ultimately, uh, to the F sharp minor chord, um, and then bringing us to four chord, one, six, four, five, one. So it's almost improvised in the second section by the, the way the right hand is meandering around over the basic harmonies. The harmonies are not that complicated because he's moving quarter notes, but this hand is dancing around like improvising. So that's what's happening. I think I got the basic points because I wouldn't worry about every single little harmony. I'd worry. I'd mostly think about big constellations of where you're going. If you're going to dominance, you're going to diminished chords, and where the diminished chords are going, where the ultimate cadences and the major keys are in this piece. <laughs> 